What's new today is that we are finally automating the power cycling for the 2500 watt CVS heater system. In the last video, I used a simple on-off switch to control my 40 amp DC to DC solid state relay. And I simply turned that switch on and off to simulate how an on-off controller like the new PID controller might work. So here, I have added this Rex C900 PID temperature controller to control the SSR. This sheath type K thermocouple tells the controller how hot the work is. The upper readout is the temperature of the work at this moment, right now 29 degrees Celsius. The lower readout displays the desired temperature to be maintained once we get there. I can set it to be anywhere I want up to about 1200 degrees Celsius. So when we start from room temperature, the power will stay on constantly until we approach the set temperature. It will be of interest during that period to watch the temperature of the SSR's heat sink and that's being measured here and read here in degrees Fahrenheit, by the way. I'm now turning on the main circuit breaker. I'm going to now turn on the output of the relay in the PID controller to turn on the SCR. Current goes up to 36 amps. I'll start the timer. Temperature starting to rise, 39, 40, 41 Celsius on our way to 1,000 degrees Celsius. Uh, fr uh, the uh, frequency 43.5 kilohertz. Uh, the uh, temperature of the heat sink is currently 67 degrees Fahrenheit. Now the system is heating up. While it does that, here's a bit about getting the PID controller working. The instructions that came with the PID controller are just another chinglish disaster. Lots of detail, but no useful how to get me running information. They even told me that my model wouldn't read temperatures higher than 400 degrees C with a type K thermocouple, which is what I have, but it does go a lot higher than that anyway. After all was said and done, all I had to do was to wire it up and plug it in. You push the set button once, and when the SV, the green uh, display, uh, starts to flash. You just use the little arrow keys here to pick the temperature you want, push the set button again, and you're ready to go. There is just a relay output here that turns the heat on and off, and those, those relay contacts close as soon as you power it up, so be prepared that you will get heat at that time. The PID function is already on, so the relay is telling your device to supply power. When the temperature of the thermocouple over here gets close to what you set, the relay opens. The controller gets better at closer control as time goes on, they tell me. Now my clock is reading 2 minutes and 30 seconds. The temperature is 550 degrees Celsius. We've got a pretty good glow in the crucible. Seven hundred degrees Celsius. The current is still about thirty-eight amps. The temperature of the heat sink under the solid state relay is ninety-nine ninety-eight degrees Fahrenheit which is just a bit over body temperature. I'm putting my fingers on the top of the solid state relay itself. It's a little warm to the touch, maybe 10 degrees hotter than this, uh, what the uh, heat sink itself is measuring. We're up to 101 degrees there now. 880, 890 degrees, uh, just about 890 degrees uh, Celsius. Three minutes and 43 seconds into the test. Current is still 38 amps. An important thing here is that the heat sink that is not very hot for a heat sink, 105 now. And the, uh, the current just went off. 
we at uh, 900 and some degrees. A little overshoot there. Ten twenty six degrees seems to be steady there right now. Now it's starting to drop off again. Typically, when the solid state relays fail, if they fail, they're going to fail shorted. Obviously, with the power off, this is just noise in the uh, frequency counter, uh, which doesn't really matter at all. In fact, some of that noise may be coming from the PID controller itself. One degree below a thousand, the heat came back on again, and it works. 38 degrees again, this is a positive thing after the failure I had with a 100 amp uh, unit, that uh, SSR that failed at uh, 20 amps. So now we're cycling on and off. 992, 993, 95, 96, 97, 98 dropped off there. So hopefully it gets a little smarter as it goes. I put two useful links in the description uh, to help you set up the PID controller. Now let's take a look at what percentage of the time the uh, unit is on. By the way, the, the uh, temperature of the heat sink is 97 degrees now, drop back from that 101 or whatever, because now we're starting to cycle back and forth. The top of the SCR is barely warm. Okay, I'm going to try to catch the time here when the, uh, when the heat goes off to get an idea of what percentage of time we are, uh, we are uh, on. 6.30 on the clock there, off, 6.36, off, 36 seconds, it went off, temperature overshot, 1,012 degrees, remember when it first heated up, it went all the way up to 1,026. 36 seconds. Went off. 701, 702, so on. 1004, 3, 2, 1, 1000, 999, 998, 97, 96 went back on at 18 seconds. So that'd be. like 42 seconds off and 41 so it looks like about 42 seconds off and 23 seconds on which means that the uh, percentage of on time is about one-third about one-third for this particular setup and what we're doing here is we're just checking out the solid state relay being controlled automatically by this $24 PID controller, which is, I'm sure, a, you know, a Chinese knockoff. Uh, I chose 1,000 degrees uh, Celsius uh, for heating up this copper uh, because I wanted to just get this cycling going on. If there was a heavier load in there, we'd have a higher percentage on time. We see that the SCR is doing its job. So the idea here is to run a 10 minute test. Again, 10,013 or 1,013 degrees. So it's cycling between about, let's call it 1,012 on the high side. And I haven't been watching to see how much far it drops. We know the heat comes back on 
about now, but the temperature drops a few more degrees, 94, 93, 92, 91. And then it starts climbing in. So about minus nine and plus 12 degrees out of a thousand degrees. I think that's doing really, really well. So you can see that this DC to DC solid state relay does exactly what it is supposed to do. We have heated up the work and then we control the temperature of the work for 10 minutes, cycling the power on and off about every 40 seconds off and 23 seconds on, something like that, while maintaining the work temperature uh, within about 10 degrees either side of 1,000 degrees Celsius. I, I picked on copper so we wouldn't have any Curie effects affecting the current draw from the system. Now, as I turn the power off to end this test, we will see that the SSR for the final time today does indeed stop the flow of current to the work and it was already off, so we have success. So now we have at least one way to control the work temperature for ZVS induction heaters. Somebody still needs to find a source for DC to DC SSRs that can handle 60 amps or even a bit more, just as well as this particular 40 amp SSR handles 30 to 40 amps. If you are that person, I hope you'll report when you have good news. Thank you for watching.